the first part, we had created the base UI of our application. On this part, we'll go ahead and start animating it. Before we start, let's go ahead and install some dependencies. We'll be installing React Native Reanimated and React Native Gesture Handler. As of now with Expo 34, I need specific versions for it to work. So I'm going to be installing those specific versions. So we'll say yarn add React Native Gesture Handler. And we want to go for 1.3.0. And for React Native Reanimated, we want to go for 1.1.0. Let's close out the terminal. Back in our index.js, let's go ahead and import animated from React Native Reanimated. I'll also be importing the tap gesture handler. and the state from React Native Gesture Handler. First, let's wrap our sign-in button with our Tap Gesture Handler. This makes our particular view clickable. And this Tap Gesture Handler has an on handler state change method which we'll map to this dot on state change. Now let's go ahead and create a constructor. Inside this, let's call super. Here we'll set up a new animated value. So we'll say this dot button opacity, which will manage the opacity of our sign in button and we'll create a new animated value. So here, let's just say new value and start with a default value of one. And on top here, we'll extract value from animated. So here we'll say const value is equal to animated. Similarly, we'll be extracting other things out as well from animated in order to create our animation. Now, basically what we'll be doing is we'll be changing the opacity of this button when it's clicked. And based on that opacity change, we'll trigger all the other animations using interpolate. So in order to start and stop our animation, we'll be using the state of our tap gesture handler. So let's go ahead to the documentation first and understand what are the types of states available. So on our tap gesture handler, we have six states, undetermined, failed, began, canceled, active and end. We always start with the undetermined state and we use the on handler state change method in order to access the latest state of that particular handler. So let's have a look here. We had set up our on handler state change method. So let's access that. So we'll say this dot on state change because our on handler state change maps to the on state change. Within this, we can directly use animated dot event to map the state. So here we'll say animated dot event. And for ease, we'll just access event from here and get rid of animated. Then inside this, we can access the native event which will give us access to the state of the handler. And then depending on the state, we can run our animation. For that, we'll import a few more things from React Native Reanimated. The first thing is going to be block. Then we'll have condition. Then we have equal to. And lastly, we have set. So here we'll open up a block. All a block does is it says run the following code in order. So before we run the code, we want to check what the state is. So we'll say condition. And we'll use equal to to check if the state is equal to state dot end. That is when the button is clicked, we start with the undetermined state. We go through the other five states. And lastly, when the button is released, the state of the tap gesture handler is end. So we want to make sure that once the button click is complete, only then we want the animation to run. So whenever we pass in condition, the first parameter is the condition. If that condition is true, then we run the second parameter. We'll use set to set the value of this dot button opacity. So we'll say this dot button opacity and set that to zero. And if the condition is false, then you can pass in a second parameter here, which is optional. So we we'll leave that out for now. Just one correction here from the native event, we get back a lot of values and we want to access the state. So you need to extract it out by passing in curly braces. Now let's head over to our tap gesture handler. And here 
we need to change this view to an animated view so that we can animate its opacity. So we'll say animated dot view and change that to animated dot view as well. Here in the style, I'm just going to spread out styles dot button and along with this, we'll pass in opacity and point that to this dot button opacity. Now let's test this out. So when we click the button, we notice that it gets hidden exactly like we want it to, but it disappears immediately. So let's make that disappear gradually. So we'll run a timing animation on this. For that, we need to create a run timing method, which we'll pick up from the documentation itself. So here in one of the examples, we already have this run timing method. I'll put a link for this in the description. All this does is run an animated dot timing, but it's a little more complex because it uses reanimated. I'm going to copy this out. Come here to the top above our class component. I'm going to paste that in. So we have an initial state for our animation. Then we configure the animation and then we run it. For those of you who want a better understanding of this, they can check out my previous video on react native reanimated. So here in the configuration, we'll just set this up to 1000 because we wanted to run over one second. And now let's come back down here to our on state change. Instead of directly setting the button opacity to zero, we'll replace the zero with the run timing method. So we'll say run timing. The first parameter is a clock. So we'll say new clock. The second parameter is the starting value, which is one in our case, and we want it to animate it to zero. Before we can test this out, we also need to import certain more things for our run timing method. So here from animated, we'll import in clock, start clock, stop clock, debug, timing, clock running, and I think that should be enough. From React Native Reanimated, we'll go ahead and import easing since it's required to configure our run timing animation. Let's save that. And now let's test out our animation. And as you can see that it fades out gradually. So like I had said earlier, I'm going to interpolate over the button opacity to animate the rest of the components. So from animated, let's also import interpolate. And in our constructor method, let's set up these other animations. So firstly, we'll have a Y position for these buttons. So let's call that this dot button Y. That'll be an interpolate. We'll go over the this dot button opacity. The input range is going to be from zero to one. And the output range will be from a value of 100 to zero. So initially it'll be at this position. And when it animates, it'll go down by 100. We'll also animate this background upwards while this animation is happening. For that, let's say this dot BGY. I'm just going to copy this interpolate. The input range will remain the same. For the output range, we'll go to one third of the screen height. And since we want to move up, it will be a negative value. So for that, we'll say negative of height divided by three and save that out. We'll also pass in an extrapolate over here to make sure that the animations do not extrapolate themselves. So here we pass in extrapolate and then we set extrapolate dot clamp. We need to import extrapolate here as well. Similarly for BGY extrapolate is going to be extrapolate dot clamp. Now let's just try these values out first. So along with button opacity, let's pass in a transform. Set the translate Y to this dot button Y. We'll apply the same value to the other button as well. Let's make that button an animated dot view. Here let's pass in opacity, set that to this dot button opacity and let's transform set translate y to this dot button y and lastly to our background let's again make that an animated dot view let's pass it transform set translate y 
to this.bgy. Let's save that. And now let's test this out. As you see, the buttons animate out towards the bottom and the background animates up towards the top. In the next video of the series, we'll go ahead and complete the animations.